Khan. The legendary cricket captain turned politician is one of the most recognizable faces in Pakistan. In 1992, he led the country to its first and only cricket World Cup victory, becoming an instant national hero. He retired immediately, putting his efforts into building a world-class cancer hospital after his mother died from the disease. He later moved into politics, leading Pakistan's Movement for Justice Party. Throughout Khan's life in the public eye, his personal life has also been in the spotlight. Known as a playboy in the 1980s, he settled down and married English socialite Jemima Goldsmith in 1995, a choice that ruffled feathers at home in Pakistan. The couple has since divorced. A sports legend, natural leader and a true global icon, Imran Khan is our connector of the day. Imran Khan in particular was a very mentally strong man again and a great leader. When Imran Khan took 10 others with him out onto the field, the 10 others that went out there with him believed in him, believed in the team that he was leading and believed that Pakistan could achieve anything. That is the greatest thing about Imran Khan. Imran Khan has many side to victory. What a great victory. To it. We're going to bring on a man who in his playing days led from the front in both deed and in word. His bowling alone ranked him as one of the greatest cricketers that the world has ever seen. That might be an overused word, but it is not in his case. He mixed electric pace with vicious swing. In addition, he was a batsman who mixed courage with thrilling stroke play. And if that wasn't enough, he was one of the country's greatest ever captains who led from the front. They won the World Cup, if you remember, when he told them to fight like cornered tigers. Uh, Imran's, Imran has been doing amazingly well in, in charity with his hospital, Shaukat, SKMT, Shaukat Khan Memorial Trust, where poor, poor people uh, uh, get uh, free treatment, cancer treatment, which is very expensive, and for that he has to raise money all year round, every year round, about 40 to 50 million dollars, I reckon, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and as far as in politics, I think people are taking him seriously now. He speaks from the heart, and one quality I know Imran, like a vouch for him, that he's a very honest person. And I think honesty uh, is, is a big requirement in our politics back home. Whoopa. There it is. And it is six. Just as Imran Khan fought his way to the pinnacle of cricket success, it would be premature to write him off as a future political force. For the present, though, he leaves behind the record of an astonishing all-round cricketer and a leader of rare quality. Imran was definitely happier being a leader. I mean, he knew his own mind uh, and uh, spoke it very articulately. Uh, and I mean, it's not impossible to imagine him becoming Prime Minister of Pakistan, which he seems to aspire to. So, uh, you know, he, he was a genuine leader. His bowling statistics place him amongst the finest of all time. And he could have secured a place in most test teams as a specialist batsman. But it is his exceptional leadership qualities that elevate him beyond even the greatest of his peers. Imran Khan's all-round ability, force of character and integrity have earned him a place of honour amongst ESPN's Legends of Cricket. retirement, Imran set himself the monumental task of raising the money to build a cancer hospital in Lahore in memory of his mother. As he fought to raise funds for the hospital, Imran became a focus, a champion for Pakistan's underprivileged. By 1997, he was campaigning for political office. You have a heroic status as, as a cricketer. There are very few sporting figures that have quite your uh, resume. But the effect that you had on women, I mean, it was amazing. It was like mass hysteria, craze, lobbies filled with college girls being mobbed. You could never go out through, through the main entrance. You were always taken through the back door entrance. I mean, all this, it was like rock star treatment that you had. And all over the world, Australia, England, India, Pakistan, everywhere. You dated some of the most glamorous women of those times, uh, movie stars, models, Emma Sargent, the painter. They were obviously attracted to you. Were you attracted to them because of their glamour? Um, you know, the, it's a very complex thing, attraction. What attracts one person yeah. to the other? There can be some very glamorous people who could be very unattractive, for me anyway. Because, um, you know, they become very self-centered, self-obsessed, actually quite boring. 
it actually is the personality which is the key. So what you're saying is you think you'll have a better chance of meeting women once you're elected. <laughs> like Nicolas Sarkozy. Is that right? Is that the model we're going for? <laughs> <laughs> not really. Uh, whatever my model, Sarkozy is not my model. <laughs> Curious George asking you simply this. He's got one question. How can I be a ladies' man like you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, don't try too hard. George, just take it easy. <laughs> Jemima has said that there wasn't a second that she doubted that she was going to marry you or thought that it was the wrong thing to do. Did you have any qualms, Imran? No. Oh, well, no, you have qualms. I mean, you know, there are doubts in everything you do. Uh, but then, you know, again, it's not, not in my nature. You know, if I, if I really want something, then I have always gone for it. So, Imran, let's face it. Uh, she had given up everything, her family, which she was very close to, her country, and everything. What for? For you. For the love of this man for the attention of this man. And when she couldn't get that attention, what was it worth? Uh, it's true. But remember one thing, uh, Jemima also knew who she had married. You know, when I mean, before our marriage, she knew that I was a dreamer. Mm. You know, that I had these big dreams for my country. Uh, but unfortunately, neither I nor her knew what this, this dream, chasing this dream would entail. And, um, you know, what were the options once we discovered that, that you know, we, were, we couldn't spend as much time together as we ought to? What were our options? I could have left everything. Yeah. And then what? Go to England. And then do what? And that's not the man she married. You know, she would have lo lost respect for me. I would have lo lost respect for myself. From a television jour journalist from London. And he asked me a question. He said, Imran Khan, aren't you ashamed of the terrorist attack in New York? I'm sitting in Pakistan. Attack takes place in New York. There's no Pakistani involved. And this man is asking me to be ashamed of something because I'm part of 1.3 billion people. Political struggle was being given a religious thing. The most important thing, the point I want to make tonight is this, that it is extremely important for Muslims to be able to convey to people living in Western countries that there is no correlation between Islam and terrorism. Unfortunately, through a planned campaign, Islam and terrorism have been linked, and 1.3 billion Muslims are on the back foot, on the defensive, trying to justify that Islam has nothing to do with terrorism. And unfortunately, we do not have either the political or intellectual leadership in the Muslim world to be able to convey our point of view. So we have things, we have words like Islamofascism. Like we all know that Islam believes in plurality. Muslims have lived with other religions. I think Pakistan is ready for a change, and especially the youth. Now bear in mind that 65% of Pakistanis are under the age of 25. And it's the young people who basically are, are sick of the old politics, the, the, the old political parties. And I think that's where our party comes in. Because if you do a survey in all the universities in Pakistan and amongst the young people, overseas Pakistanis, the number one party today is Tariq Saf, which is our party, Movement for Justice. May 2013, and the streets of Pakistan echoed with a new sound. Louder than rickshaws and even bomb blasts, new voices were making themselves heard. Pakistanis were about to vote in the country's first fully democratic handover of power. Among them, these supporters of the Pakistan Tariq Insaf, or PTI, the political party led by Imran Khan. In the run-up to polling day, the former cricket star was riding a wave of support so strong he called it the tsunami. And these rock concert-like rallies had become key to Khan's campaign. 
His huge, highly enthusiastic movement reflected a widespread desire for change. What was soon to be decided was whether this passion was enough to change the status quo. In cities like Islamabad, Khan's PTI were banking on support from young urbanites, hopeful for change. Pakistan is in a situation where we have almost touched the bottom of, uh, of, of, of our history. And we are in a very, very bad crisis and economy, we are touching the, the bottom side. My vote would have been for PMLN if they would have taken a stance two years back against the government and their wrongdoings, but they did not. I believe that maybe Imran Khan won't sweep out and become Prime Minister, but he can make a very strong opposition and he won't let government go in the wrong direction. We believe that this is a turning point for the country. And we are investing this time for ourselves, for our generations. Um, I don't think most of us we've been going to work in the last couple of days. But I think we have been pushed against the wall. We have been pushed against the wall. We see hope in Imran Khan. And we have been with a lot of patriotism and a lot of friends. And a lot of my friends who have been pushed against the wall. They have been pushed against the wall. I think this is what I have been pushed against. Everybody was coming. Everybody was coming. Everybody was coming. और आई आई जस्ट होप के इलेक्शंस रिग ना हो एंड आई होप अगर रिग नहीं होए तो फॉर शोर इमरान खान्स कमिंग फॉर शोर ही इज़ द नेक्स्ट प्राइम मिनिस्टर Lahore is the capital of the Punjab, and here, the race between the PTI and the PMLN was becoming too close to call. These rallies would be hugely significant. By 8 p.m., Khan should have arrived. It looked like he was late. Then people started to receive SMS messages. They said that Khan had had an accident at the previous rally. Everyone hoped it was a hoax. Finally, Faisal got confirmation there had been an accident. Remarkably, only hours after the accident, he addressed the nation from his hospital bed. I was this was the day all campaigning was legally required to end. So the rally that evening would be the PTI's last shot at gaining support. The plan was to project Imran's final speech live from his hospital bed. The rally was scheduled for 7 p.m. No one knew what the turnout would be like. But by late afternoon, Islamabad began to turn red and green. چھوڑ چھوڑ کام کاج اسلام آباد میں احتجاج
Operation Quetta has proved that the PTI can gather support in every province of Pakistan. But can Imran Khan really ride this tsunami all the way to the Prime Ministership? What a beautiful country, look. It's such a beautiful country. But we're doing everything to destroy it. Just look at that unplanned settlement. All unplanned. Which is why I'm in politics. In, in the last 16 years, today we are the close, closest to achieving that dream. I think we'll, uh, we'll sweep the elections. The opposition can't defeat us now. You know, we might, we might uh, commit harakiri by making stupid decisions, but the opposition is, uh, is not going to be able to challenge us now. Because people have decided against them. See, people of Pakistan have already made up their minds. They want to change. Imran Khan is clearly a man who believes his hour has come. But rallies and adulation don't count for everything in Pakistan, a country with other forces in play. Popularity doesn't always equate to votes. And even votes don't guarantee power. Mail polling stations. As suspicions of coercion grew, some feared the disorder was intentional. I am polling agent with the authority. Gentlemen, you are absolutely in no position to tell me anything. By evening, the election count was well underway. It showed a 55% turnout, a historic high for Pakistan. Very soon it became clear that the PMLN were well ahead. Nawaz Sharif had been chosen to lead the country. But the PTI had won enough seats to form local government in the province of Khyber Pakhtunkhwa. That night, the PTI supporters digested their party's performance. For us, Imran Khan is a hope. It's a concept. We, you guys who, who are not supporting PTI, they need to understand that in Imran Khan we believe because he's our hope. But the PTI will take on a new role as the opposition, and Faisal will be back on his mic. We will form the government in KP, for sure, uh, as the results of predicting that. And we will set an example there. Inshallah, Pakistan will progress. And uh, the next elections, we will form the government in centre as well. From zero to here, I mean, I mean, this really is an amazing achievement. When I get older, I will be stronger. They'll call me freedom, just like a waving flag. When I get older